tool palettes is a wonderful interface that simply doesn't get enough use. In this tutorial I give you a brief overview and then I show you how to customize some aspects of it. To start, enter the tool palettes command and there it appears. I'm going to drag it away from the properties palette so you can see it more clearly. Now it may not look special, sort of like a, a big toolbar, and uh, in some ways it is. For example, I'll take this click on circle and like a toolbar or a ribbon, uh, there's your circle. But there's uh, features that are, are really, really nice. So for example, I can uh, simply drag this color and it'll be instantly filled. No need to go through the long and complex hatch dialog box. Same with this gravel hatch pattern. I'll simply drag it over and there it is filled and to scale. An easier way to open up the tool palette is to right click any user interface element and then go down in this context menu until you find tool palettes, click it, and there it is. Once again, I'll drag it away. Now I said there's some ways of customizing it. Well, the way you customize it is you right click one of these icons and then choose properties. And these are all the things that you can customize. Now what I've done here is add on this particular text that causes it to draw a line goes from 1 comma 1 to 2 comma 2. All you need to know is that the semicolon acts like you pressing enter or the space bar. Okay, so let's try using it. I'm going to click it and there's the line that goes from 1 1 to 2 2. Now notice that the line command continues. So let's, uh, let's make the line command stop after drawing that. I'll go back into properties and add 2 semicolons to end the command. Okay, so now when I click on it, the line is drawn and it, the command also ends at that point. So that's a very simple type of customization you can do with tool palettes. Now I'm going to show you how to customize properties. Here's the revision cloud button. I want to uh, customize the way it acts when I click it and use it in a drawing. So I'm going to first of all make a copy of it from the draw tab and then move it over to the command tools tab. And here's how you do that. Right click it, copy, click command tools, right click, paste. And there we go. Now before making any customizations to it, let's see how it works. So I click on it and then I am prompted to start drawing. And there we have it. Now it's black and white and I may want to put it on its own layer and stuff like that. So let's see how we do that. Well, let's uh, first create the layer that we need. And I'll use the dash layer command because I find that faster. Press M to make a new layer and I'll call it red line. And let's make the color of this new layer red. What else should we do? Well, that's enough for now. Okay, I right click the revision cloud button to get at the properties and you can see the properties here. So you have color by layer, uh, layer use current. Well, let's not use the current layer. Let's use the new red line layer I made. The color will be red because that's specified by the layer and we'll leave all the others. Okay, so now I'm going to click and let's start drawing and there you go. It's placed on the uh, red line layer and it's colored red. Now, I may want to have different properties for it. So let's take a look at the command line, what happens there. Properties of the rev cloud at the command line are specified by the style option. So I'll type S for style and then C for calligraphy. Okay, so that's done. I press escape to exit that command. So I'll go back into properties for the revision cloud and I'll edit the command string. Remember that you press semicolon for an enter and then we needed S for style semicolon for enter, C for calligraphy, semicolon for enter. Click OK. Let's try it now. Click revision cloud and now as we draw it, it's in calligraphy style in red on the red line layer.